Mars is home to some of the most amazing geological features in the solar system. The volcano Olympus Mons is its highest mountain, standing at 22 kilometers, almost triple the height of Mount Everest. Valles Marineris is a canyon system stretching across 4,000 kilometers of the planet's surface, at depths of up to 7 kilometers. Its amazing features and similarities to Earth have made it an exciting destination for unmanned crafts for over 50 years. If there's anyone listening on Mars, on this special occasion, you will hear this. In that time, 56 missions have been launched to the Red Planet, seven of which were rovers designed to explore the surface. Of the four rovers that have successfully landed, they have clocked a combined operation time of almost 23 years and have travelled a total distance of 64 kilometres. That's just 2.8 kilometres a year, quite a slow way to explore an entire planet. There is of course a faster way, flight. But can planes even fly on Mars? Planes use thrust to create lift on the wings by effectively pushing down air to overcome the force of gravity. On Earth, planes achieve thrust by burning fuel with oxygen from the atmosphere. Because Mars doesn't have any significant amounts of oxygen in its atmosphere, an airplane on Mars would have to bring its own supply or use an electric motor, thereby severely limiting the range of any aircraft. The atmosphere on Mars is less than 1% the thickness of that on Earth, meaning a lot more thrust and speed is needed to create the same amount of lift as on Earth. But Mars only has about one third the gravitational pull of Earth, slightly reducing the required thrust. It turns out that the speed required to generate enough lift for a light aircraft on Mars is around the speed of sound, or 1,200 km an hour, compared to just 100 km an hour on Earth. At that speed, turning becomes a problem because the planes have massive amounts of inertia and the wings don't have enough drag to change the direction of flight. This means the plane turns, but the direction of flight doesn't change, resulting in a horrible crash at the speed of sound. This makes flight on Mars seem like an unreasonable mission, which is probably why the 11 flight missions planned by NASA since the 70s were understandably either cancelled or replaced by orbiters. A much more realistic approach to flight on Mars, and one that NASA and other space agencies are seriously considering, is the use of balloons. Balloons are much cheaper to produce, and importantly, can cover a lot more area. Concepts of Mars planes have had estimated operational times of between 10 minutes and an hour, while balloons would be able to fly on the order of several months completing several trips around the entire planet. In 1995, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory started designing the Mars Geoscience Aerobot for a 2001 launch, which was to undergo a 500,000 km journey across Mars, circumnavigating the planet 25 times. Other designs included solar-powered blimps and solar electric propelled aerobots. Needless to say, none of these missions ever went ahead. This is because they can't do what rovers have been trying to do ever since they landed on Mars. Search for life. An aerobot may be able to explore much more of the planet, but a rover or lander can dig into the soil and look for organic compounds and life if it were to exist there. Finding life on another planet would arguably be the most important scientific discovery ever. So it's no wonder that NASA, the European, Chinese and Indian Space Agency's plans for the coming years is a host of more rovers. But things are changing. As NASA and SpaceX both gear up for manned missions to Mars, Landing sites have to be explored for areas of high scientific research value, resources for the crew, and safety. Currently this is being done by orbiting satellites, but there is only so much they can see from space, and sending landers to the 50 landing sites of interest named so far would take a while. Instead, aerobots could be deployed to fly over these regions to narrow down the choices, and then finally a rover, before the manned mission a few years later. Aerobots could play much more important roles in exploring other solar system bodies, like Venus, whose atmosphere is too thick to allow satellites to peer in, and whose atmospheric pressure at the surface is so high that it would destroy rovers shortly after deployment. Other destinations could include our solar system's gas giants or Saturn's moon Titan. <laughs>